Welcome to this third edition of Uganda First, where we look at issues to do with patriotism in their detail. In the next one hour, dear viewers, we are going to be deliberating on the practice of fostering patriotism in schools. We will go at length to discuss how best schools can encourage learners to adopt patriotic values and how learners can apply such values to better themselves and the country at large. In studio today, we are joined by Beatrice Bananuka, the Assistant Commissioner at the National Patri Patriotism Secretariat. Welcome. Also joining us today is Professor Antony Mwagamugaga, the Acting Director of the Institute for Education Research at Makere University. Assistant Commissioner, good to see you. Good to have you in studio. Thank you. Good morning, viewers. Professor, yes. good to see you. Thank you very much. Good morning, viewers. I'm happy to be here for the first time. All right. Oh, first time. Exactly. All right. We're going to have a spirited conversation about patriotism. My name yeah. is Frank Walisimbi, and I'll be speaking English for today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, uh, I decided that each time this topic is introduced, mm -hmm. or patriotism, you know, in the general sense of it, we first define what it is. We, s we start from there to put things simply so that uh, when the conversation gets in the middle, no, nobody is lost, mm. you know? Okay. Wha what is patriotism? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, viewers, once again. We, we could start there in, in, in less than a minute and then okay. we'll handle other things. Mm. Uh, first of all, I'm happy to be here, uh, seated next to my professor who taught me leadership skills oh, really? in one of the universities in the country. Wow. Uh, currently, I'm um, the assistant commissioner in charge of training at the Patriotism Secretariat Office of the President. Mm -hmm. uh, patriotism can be defined in so many ways. I will start by giving an example of an act which is patriotic for somebody to understand patriotism. Uh, last week, I read my village mates where I stay into an exercise which excited them. Mm -hmm. I sensitized them about general cleaning, keeping their homes clean and their environment. So I invited them, we moved around the whole village, we did community work, general cleanliness. They were very excited. They said, how I wish every village would do this. It was the first time they it are doing it. It was the first time I just introduced. They all came out of their homes very eager to do the work. They, are, they were very happy, they were excited, and after that work, I explained to them that that's what we call patriotism. You cannot love your country before you love yourself, before you love your environment. So I explained to them that patriotism means that love for your country. Do you have the love for your country? And some people are asking me, what does loving country mean? Mm -hmm. Loving country means a lot. First of all, you cannot love a country that you don't understand. Patriotism is all about understanding Uganda. Do you know the country that where you are, where you were born? And do you defend it? Do you love its resources? Do you first of all understand what we have as a country and do you cherish it? So when I was taking them through that exercise, I was just teaching them a lesson that they should always learn to love themselves, love their country, defend it, love one another, be united. So to you, actions better describe this term, patriotism. Truly, truly. <laughs> yeah, it's through the actions. You cannot have that love when it is not in actions. Because okay. sloganeering does not work. Uh, you know, many times we go to schools, they tell us, hey, I'm a patriot, I'm a patriot, but I usually tell them, mere sloganeering does not work. You must put it in mm -hmm. actions. If you are a teacher, do you teach passionately? You should be seen to be acting. Walking the talk. As a patriot. True. Okay. Yes. Professor. Yes, yes. Fr 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 from your perspective, since Madame Beatrice is... Can the description be different from that? Since Madame Beatrice is putting on a mask, to uh -huh. be more comfortable, <laughs> let me, as I talk, remove mine. Okay, good. So, good morning, viewers. Patriotism has a variety of definitions. Mm. And the word patriotism has its roots in the Greek 
and the Roman philosophy. The Romans loved their country so much, and the Greeks also loved their country so much, that they began defining that feeling of attachment to homeland, the feeling of comradeship between persons, the Romans, the Greeks, as being a patriot, to the extent that one is willing to lay down his life for to die for motherland or fatherland, whatever dimension one to take. Mm. The feeling that one should protect his abode and their indicators to that. For example, the symbols, the values, or that which makes you a person who belongs to that society or country is what they termed as patriotism. Now in our modern times, we've borrowed it. We've borrowed it, and today it is bigger than what those people meant mm. because there are more challenges today. In, at, in that time, times. at that time, you'd find the Greeks were only Greeks and a few slaves they had gathered from other areas. But now today, we have a multilingual, multi-tribal, multi-thought, multi-educated society. So when you talk of patriotism today, it is bigger. And at times, it may be hard to define very effectively. Uh, of course, people give it at times a political dimension, an economic dimension, and a religious dimension, and also a tribal dimension. But all of boil to one thing, the love of where you are staying, where you are born, where you have been accommodated, where you earn a living, and where you breathe from. Because assuming we pollute our, our country, there is no person who will survive. All of us are finished. True. Mm -hmm. All right. So to you, it uh, kind of cu it cuts across all aspects of life. Exactly. Faith, uh, politics, mm -hmm. uh, and others, exactly. uh, as you've mm -hmm. explained. Okay. Uh, good start. Today, we, we're going to look at uh, basically fostering this patriotism we're trying to define mm -hmm. in schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I will invite a, a video to, to be played mm -hmm. so that we hear what learners think about patriotism. It is already in schools, as uh, Beatrice will explain later. Mm -hmm. But let us first listen <coughs> to how learners describe patriotism. How do they understand it? We got this from Trinity College, Nabingo. In the training of patriotism, they emphasize the value of love for self and love for the environment and love for others. We have found uh, this very impactful in our school uh, because there's improved uh, usage of the dining materials in Nabingo. Uh, the dining, each student is given uh, materials to use, that is utensils to use throughout uh, the term, which is left on the table, and we have self-service on the tables. So since this training comes at the beginning of their course here, it has helped us so much for students to share well the food on the tables. And then two, uh, the littering and the compound. Our environment has been kept green. Uh, there is no trespassing. At the same time, uh, the students are well versed with the importance of having a clean environment so they know how to deposit uh, the wastes and wear so that the environment is kept clean. Um, we, when you go to the library, still because of these values that uh, 
uh, given to them through patriotism, uh, the, there's proper usage of library material. Patriotism is an ideology that has values. And those values are not inborn, but they are socially developed. Some of the values include love, discipline, time management, cherishing cultural heritage, family values and roots, plus many others. As a patriot, I joined the Patriotic Club in 2018 when I had just joined the mighty college, Trinity College, Nabingo. And each of us that joined that year, we had to undergo that exercise. I learned a lot of things because I was also given the responsibility to lead the parade by then. I respect people. I'm obedient to my teachers. And right now I'm standing for a post in my school. But I'm 99.9% .9 sure I'm winning this post because of the respect I give to teachers. Now hard work, I have learned like the, everything actually to get to be successful in life. You have to always put in that extra, that extra force, that extra effort that you obtain what you want. So patriotism has helped me to improve myself. I put that effort that by the end of the term, I obtain the good results I want. Then it has also helped me like to keep time, to be a very good timekeeper. That I, I don't find any problem when that I've come late or that she has going to that you stay out, you have come late. No. I have, I have practiced it. It's easier to, ha to handle leadership with love and integrity. It makes leadership easy. Leadership roles easier in classes, at different levels in classes, in the dining hall. So I love patriotism because it also teaches you that discipline, the discipline to love your country can mean small things, even littering, littering. You should not litter. When you litter, that's a sign that you don't care about the environment, you don't care about your country. So patriotism teaches you to show love for your country through doing those small things. Environment, timekeeping, respect, and others, as you have heard from some of the students of uh, Trinity College, Nabingo, and the deputy head teacher there. Uh, Beatrice, yes. are they on track? <laughs> Actually, this clip brings me memories. I was the first patron of the Patriotism Club in the school of Trinity College in Abingo. Okay. So you can see the fruits of my work. Oh. Yes. That, that is uh, which year? Uh, that was uh, early 2000, 2003 to 2010. Ne nearly 20 years ago? Yes, please. So, <laughs> the core values the girls were emphasizing mm. are the very core values we need to be cherished by everyone. And uh, I really agree with the girls what they were saying. Mm -hmm. Patriotism is very, very essential and useful in promoting love for the country. You can see once you have those core values, you can never fail to have a developed country. I, I hear you. In the start, Beatrice, we heard that uh, patriotism mm. was existing in schools in form of clubs. Yes. Where are we now? Are they still clubs? Is it a subject on the syllabus? Wh what it is like of late? Uh, you know, uh, in the year 2009, when His Excellency, the President of Uganda, launched patriotism clubs countrywide, uh, he instructed all the school administrators and the teachers to ensure that they promote this program in the schools, all the schools in the country. And then he guided that let it be, for him he called it clubs. But uh, when it started and after we have assessed what is going on, we are now saying can't it be a whole school program? Much as they are saying clubs, but wherever we go, we are teaching schools that everybody in the school must be a member of that club. We are trying to run away from that word club. Mm. We prefer calling it core, a body of hmm, core, patriotism core. 
So we say now that all the members to in say the community co, does that mean a co curricular activity? Co yeah, co yeah. Cop? Cops. Oh you okay, C O R P. Yes, C O R P yes. So we encourage schools to ensure that every person in the school becomes a member of the club, including the teachers, because what we what we promote in the club or in that ideology benefits everybody and it benefits the nation. Because as the girls we are saying, we are promoting core values, time management, being honest, hard work, mm? all those good core values that we cherish as a country. So who doesn't want to know about those values? Who doesn't want to know about the constitution of the country? Because those are the things that we teach. We, we teach them a lot in patriotism. So if you are teaching somebody about looking after the environment. You've seen the girls who don't trespass. By the way, when I left that school, I planted a lot of trees, and it's called Bananuka Forest. Even if you oh, go there, you'll <laughs> I've find I've seen that the trees, word. but I didn't yes. know about, <laughs> about the name. Yes, so all those are good acts that promote patriotism. So um, if you are saying that uh, uh, patriotism as an ideology should be in schools, then it should benefit everyone because everybody needs to know its usefulness. Why should we engage everybody? It's for the good of the community, for the good of the schools, the parents benefit from it. Uh, that is why I say it shouldn't be taken as a club, but it should be a whole school concept. Are, are you, must are you implementing that? Yes, we are. Actually, when you go to all the schools in the country, once you knock and ask them about patriotism, the fruits are there. Everybody knows the importance. And uh, it's now a co-curricular activity. We are saying, please teach everybody. Don't divide them. If you say club members and you get 50 out of a population of 1,000, then you are doing nothing. They all need the values, the values which make a patriot, which make a good Ugandan, and patriotism is all about responsible, uh, being a responsible citizen. So yes. is there a particular hour that is set aside for patriotism, you know, sessions? Yes. Uh, it is in high school as, as we in speak. In all schools now. Even primary. Uh, primary we have not yet reached because as uh, our mandate was limiting us to secondary to schools. School. Okay. When the president launched, he said, go, please head teachers, begin patriotism clubs in secondary schools. All right. It, it, uh, now but uh, in primary, there has been an outcry. Everybody wants us to now to go back to the primary. And we begin from mm -hmm. there. And we agree with them. And we are trying to, to talk to, our, to the leadership to ensure that it spreads down. It begins from down as it goes up. Because people who live secondary, we usually manage that exit group. We follow them wherever they go. From secondary, uh, when they go for tertiary institutions and universities, professor will tell you where he teaches in the universities, the clubs are vibrant. We, we usually find the students there, we teach them, and they continue. Uh, okay, I go back to, 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 to the question I was posing before mm. I, I got to Professor. That is there an hour or two mm. set aside for patriotism sessions, or it is incumbent on every teacher to no. include the, the, the patriotism values whenever they are teaching? Uh, we encourage every school to have a coordinator for the program, whom we call a patron. And the patron designs programs for the whole school so he ensures that maybe it depends on how they program. It's not on the timetable, but he can say, uh, this weekend we are doing patriotism activities. He can say at assembly we are spreading patriotism messages to the students. It depends on the way the patron organizes. So there are some uh, times which are set aside for the activities of patriotism. So it's regarded as a, a, an activity a co-curricular activity. Even the, f the government actually instructs head teachers to use part of the capitation grant mm. uh, to finance patriotism activities or which they call co-curricular activities doesn't and patriotism that, falls doesn't under. Doesn't that dent 
uh, uh, other school arrangements like uh, I don't know f uh, feeding and what have you? No, it does not because you know they use their budgets accordingly. There is part uh, co curricular activities, then other activities. So if you are funding football, for instance, why can't you fund these activities of patriotism? Eh? Buy seedlings for the students. Mm -hmm. Buy flags. Those are the activities that we encourage. Eh? Actually, if you visit the school and you don't find flags there, then you know th they are not doing the right thing. Professor so Mugaga, this mm -hmm. uh, looks like uh, something not very new. The, the, the things Beatrice is talking about, like uh, you know, keeping the environment, keeping time, mutual respect, there are things we've been taught in school for, for so many years. Uh, and looks like it's a rebrand in the name of patriotism. Was there something lacking if you've done any research, that is? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, in 2019, Makerere University Innovation Research Fund, uh, MACRIF, with support from the government of Uganda, mm. Uh, sponsored a study uh, headed by Dr. Dorothy Seboa and I'm the co-PI. Mm. And the study or project is integrating patriotism into teacher training colleges, early childhood curriculum. Our point of contention as teacher educators were or was that we have very many students who come to university and in secondary. But these students behave very badly. Mm. They throw little rubbish around. When they go to the toilets, they do not flush. At times they don't use toilet paper. You find a university toilet littered with I, I, certain chemical on the wall. I can imagine that on your Facebook. And <laughs> many, many funny things. Mm. While we are moving on the way, including riots, you find, that one I've not talked about it, <laughs> you find someone driving a very posh car and throws out a bottle of mineral water. Yeah. And our argument or suspicion was that it is at nursery where children are not taught these things. Mm -hmm. You've said, have they been there? They are there, but loosely in mm -hmm. passing, mm -hmm. and mainly we depend on the home. But I and you know very well that the parents are no longer at home. Mm. They leave at home at 6 and return at 10 o'clock. And they leave all the burden of parenting. Because remember, parenting is part of patriotism. Mm. Parenting to the maids. And of recent, we've seen maids beating up children. and So they are teaching them to be violent and exposing them to mature situations like pornography. True. So the school of education, uh, Dr. Dorothy Seboa, and a team, Dr. B Zati Beti, uh, Biakutaga, uh, Hajati Safina from the Ministry of Education, and others, we came up with a project to now take patriotism to teacher training colleges. So we teach the teachers there, and in turn, the teachers go back to the their learners. respective schools and teach. And by the way, I said at the start, Patriotism does not need a chemical or nuclear science mm. studies. It is simple things like etiquette. Don't I push you on the way? Am I able to say, hi, do I value the trees, the environment? Remember very well that guys who have filled our swamps with maram are very highly educated. Guys who litter and destroy the gutters around are highly educated. So now, let us go to the source in nursery. In nursery. By teaching nursery teachers, then you are teaching the nursery child. Mm. When teaching the nursery child, you are incepting patriotism into the education system. Because it has been there, but loosely. But remember, the parents are not playing their roles. The religious peoples have their problems also. The politicians are worse off. So let us go to the source, to the root. And that's how we've intervened in and we are bringing, we know it was there, but how? Beatrice and uh, the National Patriotic Corp Secretariat are in secondary and tertiary. 
primary and nursery are left. But we know buildings are never built mainly from the top. It is best you go the foundation, foundation first. And we've sold the idea to them. I'm very sure His Excellency and others will sponsor the Patriotic Secretariat to go now to also the children. Today, we are having a problem of COVID. And we cannot allow, take back our children to school because they, they are not well tutored. Mm. Whereas European children, when you tell them to put on a mask, they will. You don't need to coerce any, anybody uh -uh. to do so. Go to Sweden, you will never find any littered rubbish. Even in a nursery school, come to ours. Terrible. Go to the university. Terrible. Starting from the main gate. <laughs> so I think the challenge is our education terrain has not had a chance to cut out the study of patriotism in detail. So I think that's where the debate or the engagement should begin from. How do we take patriotism studies to the classroom? Right from nursery to university. And actually university should be a revision of what you are taught. Things like coexistence, respect of each other. Looking at another person as a Ugandan, not mm -hmm. as that Muganda, that Mutoro, that Muchiga, but as a Ugandan. Why is it that the, the Americans do funny things? They fight, they quarrel, but at the end of the day, they say, Country first. God bless America. Mm. All right, we're going to come back in the second segment and uh, continue the discussion. You can follow uh, this conversation on social media. On Twitter, you can use hashtag Uganda first. I will be able to see some of the comments. And I will read them out. In the second segment, you will see an, a, a number where you can send a WhatsApp message or the traditional SMS, uh, SMS as, we know, as we know it. Let's take a break. We'll be back shortly. Don't go away. are watching Uganda first. My name is Frank Walisimbi. In studio, I am with uh, uh, Beatrice Bananuka. She is the Assistant Commissioner at the National Secretariat for Patriotism and Professor Anthony Mwaga Mugaga. We are discussing uh, the idea of fostering patriotism in schools. I've uh, had questions about uh, ethnicity when it comes to patriotism. And somebody wa was asking that isn't it important for somebody to recognize themselves first uh, starting from their ethnicity, then their purpose. What is my purpose as you know, a Ugandan, a, 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 a Ugandan in, in this community? Or in patriotism uh, issues of ethnicity do not feature at all, Beatrice. Yeah, of course, to, to love yourself, first of all, you must understand yourself. Oh, where do I belong? Where do, did I originate from? Understand yourself first, using those ethnicity backgrounds you have talked about. But as you understand yourself, now know how to relate to others. It's good to know where you came from, but it should not be taken at the forefront if you are handling other issues of national importance. It's true to know, it's good to know that you were born in Uganda, you are uh, of this faith, religious faith, but in your dealings with other people, do you promote people of, of your faith? Do you promote people of your tribe? That is what is dangerous. Uh, but knowing yourself where you can, is not bad. But how do you relate with others? Uh, are you objective? Or you, you would fall on one side and leave the others? You are biased. So patriotism is all about promoting unity. If you are doing something that is all embracing, well and mm. good, mm. yes. Professor, at university, are you seeing any evidence of, uh, you know, of change? Because uh, as, as we speak now, patriotism aren't we over 10 years now when when it was introduced in schools mm. over over 12, 10 years yes almost. 12 mm. I, I imagine there are, you know students at university now who were 
say in senior one back then and they were introduced to this idea of patriotism. Do you see any evidence that the, the, the students understood what was told to them back yeah. then? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the issue to fall back to what Beatrice is talking about in the God University. Mm. By the time students reach the university, they are exposed to other tribes and other maybe ethnic uh, postulations. Normally, students do not fight each other at the university based on their ethnicity. They fight for interests. Mm. Even, by the way, as a country, the issue of ethnicity or tribe only comes in when some people feel excluded. But when all are at table eating, it is very hard to bring out the ethnicity. At the university, a lot has changed because of the system. In the past, we used to have terms, and there was a lot of time for students to engage into drinking, merrymaking, going to Katanga, make noise. But as with the semester system, as soon as the semester begins, it is ending. Mm. You can't see much. But still the tribal, ethnic galas still remain. But the point I want to emphasize is this, that why did God create us different? made a Walusimbi and made Bananuka. Bananuka. They are salient issues, points, traits, characteristics God put therein, if you believe in God anyway. Now, we have an ungodly marriage called a country. Mm. Not a kingdom, not a tribal kingdom, a ethnic kingdom, but a country. Now, having found ourselves on this matrimonial bed, and all of us come from diverse, some snore, <laughs> some squat while sleeping, somehow, because we are human beings, the one who created us gave us an intellect, we have to fit in that matrimonial bed and then survive in it. And that means... We retain our differences, but at the same time, get a unity in diversity so that we do not destroy ourselves. And that's where uh, you find uh, countries like German. If you read history, mm. they decided to integrate. The unification. They unified. And when they unified, they all became Germans. The challenge we have here, where the tribes come in, is the language. The language and the broken system. The time I was in primary myself, I studied in Tororo. Mm. When I said in, I went in Tororo in primary four, primary three, and left Tororo. Uh, and which was your home district then? Mpiji. Mpiji. I'm born at Namugongo. But I would oh, go the great Mpiji of, of then. Of then. Okay. But I would go to Tororo and study. Meet Jopa Dollars, Tesot, mm. Kumam, who have remained friends to, up, to, to, up to date. That if I have a big occasion, I'll think more about those guys I met as a child than these guys I've met during adulthood. As an adult. Implying that the socialization we undergo, the infrastructures we've set in place, the schools, the only challenge is that today it is very hard for someone to take his child to a far off area because of the dwindled academic standards there. But if there was parity everywhere, we would still travel distances to study. Travel distances. Of course, at that time we had trains, we had buses. But today there are many risks. I would not be comfortable to take my child to Chitobu because I know he may get an accident en route to, to, to Masaka. Risks are many. So, there are many things we have to do if we are to revamp certain things. The tribe is not a problem. 
and there has never been a problem. Why? Because they are salient characteristics we all share. Whether you are Munyankore, whether you are Muganda and Acholi, we all go to the toilet and cut off that function in a similar way. <laughs> there is no one who says that. For me, I'm a Muganda. When I go to the toilet, I will stand. Mm -hmm. We all squat. Today, if I went to, to, to the zoo and eloped with a chimpanzee, it cannot get a child. But if I eloped with Beatrice, because I'm Uganda, she's a Munyankore, she'll get pregnant. Why is that the case? The blood groups mm -hmm. are all compatible, irrespective of the tribe. So it means it is we who are a challenge in the way we interpret these things. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, you, uh, I told you earlier that you can follow the conversation. You can be part of it. Um, a number has been, it's going to be displayed shortly. 070-737-320. Uh, mm, okay. I hope there is no digit missing here. You can send a WhatsApp, you can send SMS, and on Twitter, you can join the conversation using hashtag Uganda first. Let us talk patriotism, let us feel patriotic. By the way, is patriotism different from nationalism? Mm -hmm. Professor? Yeah. I, I, the I mix up of the two creates a challenge. Nationalism is a good thing, but in extreme. Mm. Patriotism, as I've said, are simple, simple things which any sober person should possess. Simple, I don't mean things like greeting and so forth. I mean the state of patriotism. In, uh, nationalism is a subset of patriotism. But extreme in its nature. In its nature. To me. To okay. me. Because when you take the root of defining patriotism in terms of nat nationalism, you run the risk of excluding many and including a child because we have the Ganda nationalism, the Korean nationalism. But patriotism Within nationalism, could there be that belief that my country or my nation is greater than all the rest? Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. But we know with patriotism, you are taking a more generic look at humanity. Because when you're a patriot, it doesn't exclude others. But when you're a nationalist, chances are high that it is Uganda... Like one person pa said, patri mm. patriotism, I think it comes back to the terms we even use in our local dialects. Mm. Uh, there is one, Ubuntu mm. Bulam. Uh, mm. Do they relate? Uh, in Ubuntu. South Africa, they say Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Yeah, it's exactly. Along that line. Exactly. Beatrice, okay. the students you're trying to fit into uh, the, the, this, uh, I, I, I will not call it campaign. It's not. Mm. Um, but the whole idea of patriotism. Mm. Don't you get worried at some time that when they leave school, say uh, senior four vacation, senior six vacation, they may get, uh, you know, uh, confused by uh, other things as we know, the media, for example. And uh, they get inspired by things that don't relate to patriotism at all. And we get future citizens who are, you know, not patriotic at all. Yeah, of course, if one is well entrenched in the value, uh, well, there are challenges outside. But many times, if one has really understood the concept, that ideology of patriotism, they will remain focused. I have testimonies of uh, people I relate with, the young people, they always tell you that the concept I grasped when I was in this school st is still embedded in me. They are never corrupted. I'll give an, an example. Last week I was chatting with a, a young girl. She's now a physical planner. But she was groomed in a school that was really embracing patriotism so much, one of the schools in the country. Mm. She has remained focused. And wherever she is now, 
with our society full of corruption, you know. She was telling me, I'm uncomfortable at my workplace. I said, why? People are embracing corruption so much. Everywhere we go, they want bribes and this and that. And I'm feeling ashamed. I don't want even to touch that money, you see. So the concept remains, that feeling of patriotism remains in somebody. Once she has really grasped it, I'm very sure amidst the challenges, such a person will remain focused. I hear you. Mm. But then have you thought also of introducing patriotism amongst people who are already working, uh, adults who are already uh, you know, in, in service, civil yeah. services of the private sector? Mm. I don't know what your thought is uh, as of now. Actually, when the professor was talking about the need to take patriotism to the lower section, the nursery and primary, primary. I was also thinking loud and I was saying, actually, we need patriotism everywhere. In schools, youth in schools, and the youth outside schools, then in all the departments in the country, people need this kind of sensitization. They need this knowledge about patriotism, such as that they can work properly. Because when we go to the civil servants, we have always read in papers, all those scandals that are being yes, done yes. that we usually see. If somebody is patriotic enough, those scandals can be avoided. So there is really a need to ensure that everybody in the country gets sensitized about the need for patriotism. As a secretariat, uh, we, we really feel if this one, if we can have that national youth service scheme such that everybody can be brought on board, taught the, about the ideology, the skills, the mindset change, uh, we feel we can go away, we can go a long way to develop our country. It's our prayer and we really need it to be done on everybody. So sometimes these stories that you see in mm. the media, I get the feeling which which could even be close to the truth that they discourage they tend to discourage these young people True. who you're trying to uh, to, mentor. to to mentor mm. to introduce patriotism to mm. somebody will be at school and read a story and True. somebody has stolen billions mm. and they have this feeling why do they come to <laughs> teach us about patriotism but in any way professor uh, mugaga is this different from the civic education in the sense that we know it, patriotism and civic education, any difference? Not much. In the past, uh, the time we had primary, we had civics or civic education. Mm. It had a lot of those ideological connotations drawn from patriotism. But again, an academic angle was taken. You see, whenever you train or you teach people using an academic look, academic lens, then it becomes gram work. Mm. So, uh, to me, we can beef up, we can refine civics or social studies and then come out with a more concept. There was something you were asking extending patriotism to adults. I've always wondered the border border guys, mm. the tax drivers. If you define patriotism as love for self and the nation, mm -hmm. do they love themselves? When a man rides a border border with one leg up and then falls, breaks and is off the road. Reckless. So, I think in as much as we are looking at the school terrain, Beatrice has a bigger task of going to the field and asking maybe His Excellency Parliament for a wider mandate so that they don't limit themselves in the school setup because there was something we lost the national service. Mm. We took it as a kind of a muchaka muchaka and so forth. But when you benchmark with countries like, countries like Canada, Sweden, USA, and even Britain, the period for national service is when they teach you the evolution of your society, 
the history of your society, possibilities around. They bring youth. It's like a dissension among the Mama Saba, the what? They bring youth or people of the same age group and then initiate them into their country, which you do not have. We are never in Uganda, we are never initiated into our country. We just find ourselves in offices. One has come from Unkozi, another from Akerere, from IUIU, and you all find yourself in NTV with different ideological orientations. That's the, the, the ungodly marriage I talked about. And then you try to fit in. Whereas, if there was a national service... Fit say, in by default. If sometimes. If, if, if there was a national service uh -huh. where all youth who are graduating from universities in this particular year are brought together and taught certain salient characteristics, values, and so forth, probably would have less street fights around. All right. Thank and you. I need yeah, to yeah, add on what yes. yes, please. Uh, in regard to those youth outside school, we are not only seated in schools, but we, whenever there is a need, we go out and supplement on the efforts of other departments. For instance, now, uh, when some district leaders see a need in the community, like RDCs, the cows, they usually invite us to go and work with them to teach those youth outside school. Like now we have a program running across the country. We are going out to meet those categories Professor has been talking about. Like border the border, border, border riders. riders, the market vendors, all those, the leaders there in the communities, we are going to empower them on their ideology and skills and knowledge. Okay, we can, we can listen in or uh, read here some of the comments. No, there won't be phone calls. Let's just use SMS and WhatsApp. Okay, uh, thank you for the show. Uh, Karen Seviala, patriotism requires us to love our country and show devotion to it. However, we get discouraged by the post-election atrocities committed on the citizens by our security forces. How we can we gather ourselves again to love our country? That is Karen. Our country has turned patriotism into loving our country the way it is with its messes. When you condemn the wrong acts and injustices, then you seem non-patriotic. Let the system avail a conducive environment for patriotism. Hmm. Nasasida uh, Areshas, he's at IUIU. Uh, it is imperative to spread the good news of patriotism in the country, but the problem we face today is the blood of ethnicity. It's thicker than the blood of Jesus. Hmm? Some tribes tend to be greater than others. Okay. I am so happy for to see that effort. That effort is being put in teaching people about values and loving our country. He says some of us are so ashamed that we have colleagues who are so shameless. By the way, what happened to PSC in primary schools? Well, what's that? PIS? PSC. PSC. Yeah, the presidential AIDS. Initiative on AIDS. Something. Oh, mm. okay. <laughs> Abbreviating. All mm. right, all right, all right. So after a certain region of the country, uh, okay, I'll leave that out. It is not patriotic enough. <laughs> <laughs> Patriotism cannot be taught the same way you can't teach a child to love his or her parents. The way leaders at all levels behave will determine the love we'll have for their nation. Leaders are corrupt, treat other citizens like second citizens. Corruption is the order of the day and there is no will to stop it. Torture, kidnaps, maiming, and overstaying <laughs> in power. I, I, I think... Uh, there is a challenge here. Um, each time that the, the patriotism topic is brought, you know, people tend to relate it to the conventional politics as we know it. True. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a challenge to you. Mm -hmm. And how do you, by the way, plan to, to overcome that? You need to, to make this as neutral as possible, in my opinion. Mm, true. Uh, there is that mix-up moderator uh, which people should understand. 
Actually, in most cases, people confuse the National Secretariat for Patriotism Corps with NRM Secretariat, mm. uh, which is partisan. Ours is not partisan, and uh, we embrace everybody. Now, um, as you have really pointed out, uh, people are confusing things. Uh, Mr. Keron Seviara, uh, thank you for your concern about the atrocities that we have as a country and we must stand out and condemn them. Uh, you have pointed out that uh, during the elections there was violence, there was what, and that is what we are out to condemn. We are teaching people that you cannot solve a problem with violence. So if you love somebody, you cannot engage <coughs> in violence. So it's a combined effort. <coughs> Sorry. That's why we need patriotism from the beginning. Mm -hmm. People should learn to love one another, respect one another. And in that case, we shall reduce on all these crimes and atrocities and all that. We need a conducive environment. Um, about ethnicity, I think Professor talked in detail about that. Um, PSA in schools, that is a presidential initiative on AIDS. Um, it was a program. I will not comment much on it. But uh, it is under Ministry of Education and Sports. They are supervising okay. there it. There is a desk for it. There is a desk for it. Okay. So uh, I'm sure it is in place, and they should be able to oversee its implementation. Uh, someone out there, I've uh, forgotten the name, he talked about uh, patriotism, that it cannot be taught. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a it's common question. It's a common question. Me, I feel you can teach patriotism. Because what is patriotism? We explained right from the start. Uh, patriotism is all about cherishing your country. Before you cherish it, you must know it. There are so many people who don't know much about their country. You know, you are here, you are growing up in Kampara, you have never visited Chigezi, you don't know the resources in Karamoja. Uh, and your arguments are usually confined within uh, your, just your, there. your area of state. So how will you love your country? You need to be taught about it. You need to be taught about the resources we have as a country such that you can love it the more. Okay. You, you need to be taught about, about our history, where we came from, environment. All those are issues that we tackle when we are teaching patriotism. So the concept of patriotism must be taught. If, yeah. if you can teach somebody to hate another one, why, you not, know, teach love? why not teach love, I as Mandela you. said. Okay, uh, mm? let's try to uh, Then the issue the of way. corruption. Corruption is rampant, I agree with him, but corruption is not only with the leaders, you know. There is a tendency of thinking that corruption is in only in offices up there. But I feel this is cross-cutting. Mm? There are some corrupt acts that we do unconsciously. As individuals. As individuals. You are a teacher. You are dodging students in a class. That's corruption. That's corruption. You are a market vendor. You are... Uh, selling your items, but you are cheating people. Isn't that corruption? Uh, there is so one interesting corruption which we take for granted. Yes. yes Men go to one buy pork, <laughs> go to meat, eat, and go back home and tell <laughs> their children and say time your things are very hard. We can't mm -hmm. even afford meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for them, they have already... It's corruption. And they take home bulging. So that is corruption. True. <laughs> that's schools. Mm. Schools which uh, bother charge. Yes. That's a good immediate example. Mm. <laughs> so that is corruption. Sechibal <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, mm. thank you for the comment. Uh, this should be put in our teaching curriculum. Uh, what they are uh, doing, moving countrywide, is good, but it's better mm. when it is taught in schools. Uh, we have a few minutes to, to, to go away. Patriotism should be shown in the leadership. Uh, children's behavior. Uh, does patriotism concern only us citizens and excludes security personnel? Mm -hmm. Leticia in Ginger, Peter in Entebbe, thank you. You so many. Uh, thank you for responding in, uh, uh, in numbers. Please don't call, just send a message or WhatsApp. So, hey. uh, let's conclude. Let's conclude. So, I is there assessment uh, in schools uh, about patriotism? Okay, first of all, somebody has talked about the curriculum that we should include patriotism there. 
Uh, I want to appreciate the Curriculum Development Center. Uh, they have just uh, rolled out a, a new curriculum and uh, they have captured elements of patriotism and such that uh, when it is taught, almost in every subject you find uh, elements of patriotism. They are telling the teachers to promote that patriotism ideology in the schools. So it is well captured and uh, much as it is not in the it has not been in the curriculum, but now you can see it is coming up. And we are saying everybody in the school must benefit from it. Okay. Yes. So that, that's what we can call assessment, you know, in, in the sense of it, that somebody at least has an idea mm. of what patriotism is. Yes, assessment is about the actions now also. The actions, when you teach patriotism, do people change? Do they change their mindset, the mm -hmm. way they do things? So those are the actions that uh, determine what we teach. For instance, this value of hard work, hmm, we teach them to, to go out and be, uh, engage in hard work. So you can always assess them in schools, do you, are there projects that the children are doing? What about in their homes? They shouldn't stop at school, but even when they go to their homes, let them have gardens. Okay. Uh, let them continue doing good, like in this COVID season. Our children in the families, have they been walking the talk? Have they been sensitizing people about washing hands? What have they been walking the talk? Uh, aside from enjoying television and, yes. uh, and, and eating. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, your parting remark? We have just a minute to, to, yeah, to my go. My parting remark is that uh, all of us should be in this school. All of us have an obligation to make Uganda a better country. We usually complain about one section, security, but these are not drawn from Mars or from another country. They are brothers, they are sisters, so all of us. The day we shall have a better understanding of the love of country and neighbor, we shall have a better terrain to live in. All right, thank, thank you, you Professor Antony Mwaga Mugaga, Acting mm -hmm. Director of the Institute for Education Research at Makere University. Ms. Beatrice Bananuka. Assistant Commissioner at the National Secretariat for Patriotism Corps. Cool. Corps. All right, good to have you. Next time, please mm -hmm. make time and uh, come and teach about patriotism. Thank, Thank you, you. Uh, for watching wherever you have been and those who have participated by sending SMS, WhatsApp, and on Twitter. Thank you so much. My name is Frank Alistimbi. See you again next Thursday. Mm -hmm.